All right, hey, shalom, makim, shalom. First and foremost, as always, before I get started, giving all praise unto the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachah Hakodash. Double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone that have taught us this truth and that rule well. And peace and blessings go out to the hopeful members of the elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth that are in the hopes of receiving salvation and mercy during the time of Jacob Shubble and that are worshiping the Heavenly Father in sincerity, in spirit, and in truth. All right. Now, this will be a land back video upon one of the recent videos uh, that the beloved elder Yashawama from Dallas had made entitled uh, Israel is the mascot of wickedness. All right. And pretty much based upon that term of our people being the mascot of wickedness fits them to the T. Okay. Because whenever it comes down to any kind of, you know, talking point that boils down to wickedness, whether it's uh, prostitution, uh, smoking weed, uh, you know, gang begging, and all that, Jake is at the forefront of being the driving force of bringing it to the masses of society, man. All right? And through that lesson, the main point that I wanted to uh, just hit is just understanding how blessed we are, man. We're beyond blessed, okay? Because if it wasn't for the Heavenly Father giving us this truth and bringing us unto the fold of entering within the sanctuary of the Most High, we would be just like them, all right? Of being a damn the stallion, of being a sexy red, or, you know, these, I can't even think of one right now, of thinking we're like NBA young boy, of being like YG and all these, you know, degenerate ass people, all right? That speak about nothing but death. Hoes, clothes, guns, drugs. That's all Jake knows to do, man. Alright? But guess what? At one point in the period of time, we were doing that. You know? Of being completely strung out within the living organism <laughs> that Esau has conformed us to be a part of. Alright? And affiliating ourselves to the point of us being just like Esau. As the scriptures speak about in uh, Jeremiah the 5th chapter, all right, we surpassed the deeds of the wicked to the point where we became just like him, being the border of wickedness, okay? So with that being said, Lord's will, this is an edifying lesson to you, brothers. Uh, the first scripture that I want to grab is um, in the book of Psalms, chapter 16 and 1 through 2, but in the translation MSG, all right? It says, keep me safe, O power, I've run for dear life to you, okay? I say to the Heavenly Father, be my Lord. And this is the point. Without you, nothing makes sense, all right? And like I said, once upon a time, when we were without the Heavenly Father, without hope, and being aliens from the commonwealth of our true nationality, all right? Nothing made sense to us, all right? When we were integrated within this living uh, culture of gangbanging, of killing our brother, of smoking, and all this, all right, we were in a process of searching for something, you know, always trying to find the answer as to why we live like this, all right? And before I pull up another precept, uh, I want to play this quick clip from a YouTube channel called Soft White Underbelly. All right. Now, within this uh, page, uh, it's this one interviewer that pretty much interviews nothing but Jake's. All right. You do have a couple Edomites, but the main focal point of this guy is to bring light to what people go through. All right. And the main people that he interviews is nothing but Jake. You know, whether it's, you know, them being affiliated with gangs, whether it's them being uh, drug dealers, uh, homeless. All right. It shows forth what they've been through, all right, what they've learned from it, and what they, uh, you know, regretted, okay? And the one that I've queued up is this one uh, gangbanger called Daniel that pretty much uh, was affiliated with, I forget what gang it was exactly, but pretty much he, uh, he survived it, you know? 
he survived it to the point where now he's in his uh, early 40s and he's lost all right you may see him here and there in TikTok where he speaks about Anunnaki and all that. He's lost. He doesn't know what he believes in. Okay? But he understands that we live in Esau's world. Alright? Where our nation is within a system that pushes forth a way of living that is folly. Alright? So let's listen up real quick. What do you think the whole gang attraction is, is I mean I, I see you don't see you only see like the Latin, Latin American communities or the, uh, the African American communities kind of getting involved usually there's not many white guys so and that shows forth who the target is man all right the so-called Negroes the so-called Latinos and the so-called Native Americans the true descendants of the most high all right that's Esau's target and when I say Esau it's the so-called white people for you new brothers that may be tuning in, all right? The nation that is against our nation, all right? Um, what, why, why do you think that is? Is it, is it the, the, poor, the fact that these communities are poorer? I think literally from, um, I study a lot, I read a lot. Um, I, I think, I'm a deep thinker. Um, I think it's a it's it's a system that we're put into. Part of it to do with gentrification. A lot of it to do with um, certain restrictions that are put on our so-called minority communities. Um, and come to find out, we're not a minority. We're not. We're a majority of people out here. We're deep, black and brown. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think it's a it's a it's a system. A systematic thing, like you know, that we're put into. It also becomes a mindset, too. right? And it becomes a mindset. You know, why is there liquor stores in every corner? Why do we have all this stuff? Why do why does our rank go up? You know, why do we get pushed out of our communities? You know, it seems like we're getting pushed out of every other day. We're getting pushed out of something. Look at the whole Dodger Stadium thing. You know, um, those are three communities that got pushed out. You know, to build a stadium for what? Why? Why do these people get displaced from their houses? You know, the 710 freeway, when my, when my grandpa, you know, was younger, a lot of his friends got taken out of their homes to build that freeway. Yeah, we do need a pathway <laughs> to travel, but, you know, don't just rip people out of their homes. You know, this is where you live. Imagine somebody going to your mom's house and ripping her out of her house, you know, telling her, you know, to get out of here. Right. And like you said, all these questions are in his mind. Why is it like this? Why is it like that? You know? But once again, man. Alright? We once were in this estate. Until we entered in the sanctuary of the Most High, man. Alright? Let's get that in the book of Psalms. Alright? Once again, what we understand, what the Heavenly Father has finally enlightened us with, Akiyam, is something hidden. Alright? And we'll get that next uh, after this scripture. All right. The Lord has endowed us a hidden wisdom. Something that isn't shown unto a mere mortal. All right. This is Psalm 73 and 14. It says, For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. And this is what we were going through. You know, every day catching hell and not having the understanding as to why it was happening. You know. Verse 15, it says, If I say I will speak thus, behold, I shall offend against the generation of thy children. Okay? And another testimony that I want to show is this one Jake called Johnny. Alright? that Who lived in uh, southeast of LA. That at first wanted to do something different than what his family was doing. Alright? Because he was within a gang that was only inherited if you were within his bloodline. All right. And he wanted to do something better by getting an education, by doing this, that, and the third, and going by the books of Esau. All right. But due to him being in such a um, such a nasty environment where you had nothing but varios or towns with a bunch of gangs, he didn't have any other choice but to be institutionalized within that living uh, 
lifestyle, okay? To the point where you see him like he is right now, all right? Completely through. Now, I want to play a quick, uh, matter of fact, I'll start it from here because he starts explaining uh, briefly of what he, what he's gone through, man, all right? Not doing a prison the same way, you're just in a different environment. But if you're a real motherfucker and you can call yourself a solid self-sider, then you should be able to adapt to anything that you find yourself in. If you find you could put me on a street corner, on any fucking street corner, give me a sack, and I'll be able to deal drugs. You can set me on any street corner, give me five women, I'll pimp them all. Okay, you can do that, you can put me anywhere, and I'll be able to become a product of my environment. Because I'll watch, I'll study, and I'll- And this is what Esau's done. I love how he said that. We've, been a, we've become a product of the environment that Esau has put us within, man. All right? Because pursuant to Judith, the fifth chapter, these other nations understand what our kryptonite is. And they understand very well what to put us within so that they can finally get a hold of us. All right? Because pursuant to Judith, the fifth chapter, um... The chief captain, the leader of Ammon, understood the history of our nation very well. All right, going back to the history of our forefather uh, Terah, the father of Abraham. All right, from there all the way down to the period of Judith, they understood everything, man. All right, and believe believe you me, Esau and these other nations have all that information today, to the point where they're using it against us. And this is why we see our nation at the forefront of all this madness, all right? Real quick, just, uh, let me do a quick Google search, latest rappers of 2024. We're about to see a bunch of degenerate ass, uh, people, all right? Look at that. Not one white boy, all but Jake, man, complete demons. Okay? This is the degenerate lifestyle that our people have come down to. Alright? And it's all been done through Esau, the so-called white man. Because all these different record labels are owned by who? Esau. Okay? Look at that. Okay? Once again, it's not a coincidence. This is all systematically done for the purpose of waging war with the saints, man. Okay? Northern Kingdom, Southern Kingdom, all that. Not one <laughs> uh, white people have we seen. And if they do look, you know, like a so-called Caucasian, they probably go back to Jake. Like Eminem. That's a Jake. <laughs> As the apostles have said. Okay? But like uh, they call him JC, Johnny Casper had said, man, we've become a, a product of the environment that Esau has put us within, okay? Because going back during the time of uh, the early 1900s, all right, within East LA, it didn't look like how it does right now, okay? Jake was actually loving his neighbor, okay? And when I say neighbor, his brother, his own bloodline. Okay, but now you see movies like Blood In and Blood Out where Jake is just killing each other for the purpose of trying to, you know, have a foot over each other, man. All right. And I'll just become a part of that. Or, yeah, I might stick out like a sore thumb, but in reality, I became a part of that environment. I don't feel that I was ever institutionalized. No, I feel that I just came accustomed to doing the same fucking thing over and over again. And they'll tell me that I'm crazy. That I'm cr And this Jake has been through a lot of shit. Alright? There's been times where he, he almost made it. To the point where he didn't have to involve himself within uh, the gang culture. Alright? But, due to the curses, of course, and Esau still having... The earth in his hands and the Heavenly Father giving him the green light to continue to multiply wickedness, alright? He's still doing it up until this very point, alright? 
And this is the lifestyle that our people have inherited. All right. And like I said, we were once affiliated within that uh, same mindset. All right. But going back to Psalm 73. Okay. The Heavenly Father took out all, all these strongholds once he finally uh, called us to serve him, man. Okay. Psalm 73 and 16. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. All right. Until I went into the sanctuary of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, man. Then understood I their end. Once the Heavenly Father called us into his ministry and we were, you know, we found the apostles, the bishops and the elders of Great Millstone. All right. All those strongholds were finally torn down, man, through the spirit and power of the Lord. OK, and this alone is something that is priceless, something that can be compared to anything, man. All right. Which is the hidden wisdom of the Lord. Now let's get that next. First Corinthians two, I believe, around seven is the point, but I think I can start up a couple. I'll start at verse six. First Corinthians two and six. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor are the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of the Lord in a mystery. All right. Now let's look up this word mystery real quick in the Greek. It goes back to the Greek concordance 3466. We always bring this point out, but <laughs> it always hits because of how severe. Uh, so lucky. Yeah, it is this one. I'm sorry. How severe this uh, understanding is, man. All right. Once again. In Esau's eyes and in his perspective, we were never meant to wake up to the truth of who we are, man. All right? But the water, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man, for giving us his spirit. All right? Because through the spirit, we now have obtained true power. All right? Through the effectual working of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, man, we're now walking in the footsteps of our forefathers. All right. It says hidden thing, secret, generally mysteries, religious secrets confided only to the initiated and not to ordinary mortals. All right. A hidden or secret thing, not obvious to the understanding of the Mosai, the secret counsels which govern the heavenly father in dealing with the righteous, which are hidden from ungodly and wicked men but plain to the uh, I'm sorry, but plain to the godly. OK. And once again, man, this is why something that the beloved uh, Elder Barak out here in L.A. says, count your blessings. OK. Because when it comes to these certain speaking points that can be tied with the scriptures, they're plain to us. But somebody like these Jakes, they simply can't understand it. Because at the end of the day, the Heavenly Father has reserved a set number of souls, all right, that are going to adhere to the truth of the matter. Okay? So from there, let me get a quick scripture in the book of um, Ephesians chapter 2. I'm pretty, no matter of fact, let me just look up without uh, hope. Forget where exactly the scripture is. Yep, Ephesians two. But real quick, this is a uh, crucial scripture. Job chapter seven and six. It says, "My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle." Okay. And this is the predicament of our people. Okay. Once again, going back to J. C. Uh, Johnny Casper. He uh, he got his first teardrop at the age of 13, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So at a very early age, a lot of our people become. 
um, affiliated within that circle of violence, okay? To the point where a lot of them die at very young ages, man. All right? And why is that? Because they're without hope. As it says, my days are swifter than the weaver shuttle and are spent without hope. All right? Meaning that they have nothing to look up to. All right? Their whole means of walking in this world is to simply just kill, steal, and be just like Esau, man. All right? And, you know, at times it gets you irritated, you know? But at the end of the day, it's just a lot that the Lord has him to play out. Okay? But let's get this in the book of Ephesians 2 and 11. It says, Wherefore, remember, that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh. All right? Like I said, our people have become just like Esau, all right, in a Gentile state of now understanding the ways of the wicked better than the way of righteousness, okay, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the uh, circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Yahweh Shai, okay, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of of promise, having no hope, and without the Heavenly Father in the world, alright? And like I said, we all had to fulfill this lot, alright, of being hopeless, of not understanding why we're in this earth, alright? Verse 13, but now, in Yahweh HaMashiach, who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Yahweh Shai, man, alright? In Lord's will, through this lesson, the point of showing forth how imperative Yahweh Shai's sacrifice was for us is pushed forth, man. All right? Because if it wasn't for Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, only Lord knows where we would be. Okay? Okay, shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Verse 14. For he is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Okay? So the water Yahweh, Bahashim in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Rachakodash, the Holy Spirit. Because through the Holy Spirit, we've now been given that effectual working. As a matter of fact, let's jump to the third chapter and get that. Ephesians 3 and 7. It says, Wherefore I was made a minister. So now as the Heavenly Father has given us uh this mercy this grace pursuant to second corinthians the fourth chapter now we faint not okay it says according to the gift of the grace of the heavenly father given unto me by the effectual working of his power okay now real quick let's look up the word uh effectual working in the greek it goes back to the strong's concordance 1753 energia all right it says working efficiency in the new testament used only of superhuman power man all right once again in esau's world in his little blueprint of how he's going to bring forth himself as being like the most high we were never meant to wake up to who we are all right we were meant to be degenerate people all right and through this cycle of rote learning, nothing but wickedness, all right, we would come down to the boiling point of just killing ourselves, all right, and being swept as a nation completely pursuant to Psalms 83rd chapter, all right? That's the whole enterprise and set goal that these other nations have, all right, to cut off our nation asunder from being a people, all right? But once again, through the effectual working of the Heavenly Father's power, we have now departed from that man. And that in itself is super, all right, when it comes down to your ordinary person, all right? Because everybody else, they just flock with the rest of the birds. But now we're taking the straight path, man, all right? The path that leads to everlasting life, okay? Okay. So now let's read that again. Ephesians 3 and uh, 7. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace 
of the Most High, given unto me by the effectual working of His power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given. And at times, you know, we may feel like that, you know. Because pursuant to Isaiah, the first chapter, all right, if it wasn't for the mercy of the Heavenly Father, we should have been likened unto what? Sodom and Gomorrah. If it wasn't for that small remnant, our nation would be completely through, okay? What well, we're worthy of is death. And this is why Apostle Paul made that point of being least of all saints, all right? Because when you understand Apostle Paul's history, uh, he was being wicked, you know, wreaking havoc in the churches, you know, throwing brothers and sisters into the prisons, all right? So he disdained his past, and likewise us, you know? It says, Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, the unsearchable riches of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, all right? And that same authority that Apostle Paul had has now been endowed upon us, all right? Matter of fact, let me keep reading. Verse 9, it says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. All right? The mystery that all of our, that our nation has. All right? Once again, going back to Daniel. You know? He's pointing out the problems. He's pointing out all these, you know, situations that our people go through, but never understanding the, uh, the mystery. All right? But by us going out in the highways and byways and doing these lessons, we fellowship with our nation to bring them to the point of understanding the condition of the battle, man. Okay? And this is why the apostles of Great Millstone always point, uh, push forth that point to be diligent. Okay? But let's finish this off in Ephesians uh, 3 and 9. It says... And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in the Heavenly Father, who created all things by Yahweh Shach Mashiach, to the intent that now, unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of the Lord. Okay? And this is what the Lord has endowed us to do, pursuant to 1 John uh, 2 and 20, all right, as we've received this unction from the Holy One, we have the understanding of all things for the purpose of ascertaining uh, the perfection of the church, okay? So with that, man, uh, yeah, that was pretty much all I had for this lesson. Lord's will, the point of not only, you know, us counting our blessings was pushed forward to the point, but just being grateful for what the Lord has given us, okay? By you simply calling yourself an Israelite and following that uh, legacy of an Israelite, that alone is a blessing, all right? So count yourself blessed because you could be liking, uh, if it wasn't for that, you would be just like this Jake right here, all right? His name is George, a.k.a. A uh, little jungle boy, and based upon his countenance, you could tell that he's been through some shit. All right, he was shot in the head. He had uh, been stabbed at the back of his head, stabbed on multiple occasions, in and out of prison, through man. Okay. So with that man giving all praise to our power, Yahweh. Bahasham Yahabashai, Bahasham Rukhahakwadash, double honors unto the apostles, the bishops, and the elders of Great Millstone, who have taught us his truth and that rule well. Peace and blessings unto the elect. Shalom.